Hello and welcome back to the Tuesday Checklist, the weekly show where we find different ways to talk about the same 12 games over and over. Today, Blood and Truth is out on PlayStation VR, an amazingly cinematic action game where you basically get to be inside a blockbuster action movie, and also the City of London in VR. This got us thinking about other video game cities we love and what makes them such amazing places to explore. L is up first, really up, up into the sky in fact. Now, in some Game of Thrones style foreshadowing, I actually wore a t-shirt with my uh, favourite city on, like a couple of Tuesday checklists ago. Uh, so, you know, wow. if you've been paying attention to my t-shirts, which you all are, right? Can, shall we guess? Is it Bioshock Infinite? It is Bioshock Infinite! Oh, that's <laughs> so good! The t-shirt oh. recognizer. Yeah! Okay, so Columbia from Bioshock Infinite. That's my favourite city. It's, it's really close because I'm someone that gets really obsessed with cities and games and will just walk around them for hours and avoid what I'm meant to be doing and like just to explore. But this one in particular, I really love, except for the racism. Just starting off with that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> just talking in every Except level. for the really blatant racism, except for that. But <laughs> in terms of just architecture, I really, really like it. And so I think. I always, obviously, it's just beautiful and it's such a cool idea, this big floating city, which actually they looked into the science behind, which is another thing I really appreciate. I'll have another TED talk for you later about quantum locking and how that works, but <laughs> it's very cool. And you use like super cool superconductors and magnets. And so they actually looked into the science of how this city would theoretically work and, and actually like made it a real thing. Like have the, they have a little, if you look through the law, they have the, the physicist to talk about it. And so it's, I like that they really put all this detail into it. And um, it also extends to how they came up with the idea for how the city was going to look for the actual architecture itself. So um, the, the team have talked about it. There's a really great article where they, like years ago in the game, before the game even came out, where they talked about the inspiration and that made me know I was going to want to play it because it, um, it's based on lots of different things. So some of it is Disneyland, which you can totally really? see. Yeah, which I think is really no cool because obviously, I never picked up on that. well, it's got like the you know like the animatronics. Obviously, the gun-toting George Washingtons are like not super <laughs> Disney, but it's that kind of animatronic, fun, really carefully planned out world. And it's both the kind of fun side of it in that it looks very beautiful. It does look like if you see you know like the castle at Disneyland, it does look very similar to that in the gleaming white and the you know beautiful symmetry. But then it's also I think the creepy side. So if you've ever heard of Celebration in Florida, which is a town that uh, Disney built, and it was his idea of like a perfect town and so creepy. <laughs> Sorry to anyone that lives there, but it's <laughs> so <laughs> creepy because he wanted it to be the perfect city based on his ideals. And, um, and so, yeah, I just, I love it. And I love the skylines. I love, you know, obviously once you're in the sky, there's so much fun you can have with that. So when you're like hooking on and like flying around with the skylines, that's just super fun to do, if a little chaotic. When they're like, oh, you know, you can shoot from these. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna hold on <laughs> and, and try and land, but yeah. And it, what, is there a reason Columbia rather than uh, like Bioshock 1 underwater? Rapture. I like Rapture, yeah. I think I just prefer Sky. I think I do like the idea of underwater and I don't know why I feel like that's going to kill me more than being in the sky. But if something goes wrong in Rapture, I'm going to drown. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm underwater, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to die instantly. Whereas I, I once read a book where they talked about the drag of like material and how you could float down theoretically on a tiny piece of material from the sky. And I always think about that. <laughs> I'm always like, I think I could do it. Just like whip off a t-shirt and like hold it above my head. So I think it's because I think I'm less likely to die in Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Colombia is just, yeah, if I could live anywhere, it would be Colombia after the dismantling of the cult and the racism. Right, so, well, it's interesting that the basis of um, the uh, entry this week is one based on London because my city is based on London as well. My city is Dunwall from the Dishonored series, um, which it's um, and it's interesting, Elle, that you chose uh, Columbia. There are routes that are in common between the two because the kind of the, you know, the philosophy of the um, developers, Arcane Studios and Irrational Games, they both came from the same kind of school of like Thief, Deus Ex, um, Harvey Smith went in one direction over to Arcane Studios uh, and Ken Levine went, uh, well he stayed where he was, um, but he made Irrational Games um, and they made the Bioshock series. So that kind of like um, immersive sim mentality of like making the world around you part of the gameplay uh, and making the place that you're playing like a character, I think is probably the reason that I like Dunwall in 
the same way that you like Columbia. Uh, and Dunwall is kind of based, I think the original idea for, for Arcane Studios was that they wanted to um, make a game set in the kind of Great Fire of London, 1666, um, and that developed into more of a kind of a Victorian London. Um, they, along the way, I can't remember why they were working with him, but they were working with um, Victor Antonov, who was the, um, he's like a, an industrial designer who used to work on kind of transportation systems, joined the entertainment industry, designed City 17 for uh, Half-Life 2, like an just incredible place, um, and then was working with Arcane um, on Dunwall. And what you come up with is kind of Victorian, um, Victorian London, and it has like the industry of London, and it has like on the one hand the opulence and the decadence and the richness of like the high empire, like the British Empire, its height, and on the other hand the kind of the poverty and the plague. Um, and there's like within that just thematically the richness of suffering versus like this incredible um, like society and all the things which are coming from it. Like and you kind of get I love the wailing in Dunwall um, and the kind of I think these days it's easy to forget that London was like loads of its power came through uh, shipping and kind of uh, like the nautical power of Britain um, during the empire and the wailing in Dishonored is like one, you're sad because the whales are dying, and on the other hand, it's like this amazing kind of symbolism of the cost of progress, um, and you know, progress at any cost during the Victorian era. Um, and it's also a reflection of kind of modern London because the team came to London and they spent a, like loads and loads of time um, documenting kind of. Uh, well, the, pff, how you can kind of see the history of a city during its kind of, you know, you take a kind of a snapshot of a city at any given point and you can kind of, how you can see the city has developed up to that point. So they were kind of taking pictures of modern London and looking at how the rooftops looked um, and the verticality of London, which is really important to the gameplay, but also loads of stuff about um, security. Um, yeah, I think that London is probably, El, oh, you've lived there recently, like, um, <laughs> so you're the stats kind of boss on this, but I think it's got more CT uh, CCTV cameras than any other city like of equivalent size like in the world yeah. uh, and that kind of surveillance culture um, is really really important to Dunwall as well and you kind of get this strange blend of like modern surveillance sensibility with like um, Victorian England look and then you kind of fly around stabbing people um, and, I, and the whole thing works <laughs> thematically I think incredibly well there you go any questions about Dunwall <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so for my city, I fell in love with the city as soon as I experienced it and my character went into it and I just thought it was awesome. And it's also very convenient. And that is Camarocho. Camarocho? I think it's Cam or Camarocho. Camarocho from the Yakuza series. Camarocho, it's a fantastic city. It's um, a fictional city in Tokyo, Japan. And it was a fictional district within that area and it's just gorgeous. It's so beautifully lit. You're walking around and it's always so, it, it's kind of got like a really sort of busy vibe. Like there's always, there's always life, which is something that I really like. It's not like a, a eerie, creepy sort of like empty city. There's always people doing things, going by, and there are so many things you can do in it. It's like, if you fancy playing a bit of a video game, go to the arcade in Club Sega. You'll have so many things. You can do the grabby claw thing and get some toys, <laughs> play some other games. It's a fantastic. Want to go somewhere for food? There are so many places you can go for food. Uh, even karaoke bars, which are great, and just so many things you can do in it. You picked a city that is actually would actually be nice to live in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you say that, but it's also to... it's it's got a few a little bit of a crime issue here and there. <laughs> <laughs> so unless like even when you're walking around, I mean, it could just because be because your character is like a yakuza member, and maybe you can be picked out. I don't know if you're a common civilian. How much the gang members would be like? Oh, I'm gonna pick a fight with them. Is this game, is this the same in every Yakuza game? Is it the same place? There's, I mean, I've only played Kiwami 1 and 2 so far, um, but in Kiwami 2, you go to another city for a little bit, but even when I was in that city, I was like, I still prefer Camarocho, like, I'm gonna feel terrible if I pronounced it wrong, but I prefer the other city, and then as soon as there's a moment when you go back into it, I was like, yes, I'm home again. I'm back in my humble city where I know I know the shops, I know where my, the favourite bars are, I know where this person works now, it's great. And that's the thing, the structure of the city as well, it's so... Like when you first look at it, you're like, it's so busy. There are so many things going around, what on earth do I do, how do I get to places? But when obviously you start exploring the area more, you start learning things, like you've picked up a silver plate, I know exactly how to get to the pawn shop, I'll sell that for a couple of yen, it's great. <laughs> or more than a couple of yen, that's not very good for currency. But it's just such 
an amazing city. I went there and I've just, I've never been to Japan and just kind of being in this area, I was like, man, if Japan's like this, it's gonna be so awesome. Because I believe it's pretty... Some plates on the floor everywhere. <laughs> 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 but I do believe it is based on a actual district in Japan from because I remember even when I first started playing it I was one of those people like oh is this based in a real city um, and then when I looked it up I was like no no it's not it's a, it's a fictional one but there are loads of I believe that there are screenshots of really highly inspired places around Japan so they're like here's a picture in Kamurocho here's a picture in Japan and you're like whoa that's so cool so I know it's, it's not in the sky or it's not like got a really big historical <laughs> kind of value but I think it's just such a really cool, lively shade. city. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. No shade at all. Like, I was listening to your entries and I was like, yeah, they really are epic. I mean, my, I was also going to say Rapture. And then when you said mm. Columbia, I was just like, you know, you know what? That's true. You said you had three, so what was your third choice? I mean, I don't know if Rob's going to pick my third choice. Oh, that's true. That's no. the thing, so... Oh, well. you, no, you, no, you won't. Come on. You won't? My third choice was uh, Raccoon City. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I thought I got it. I was like, yes! <laughs> but Camarocho, or Camarucho, however you pronounce it, a fantastic city and I absolutely love it. Okay, so my favourite city um, is a city that I have uh, just talked about in a Friday feature actually. It's one of my favourite video game cities. It's Markarth in Skyrim. Um, what was that face for? It was like nothing. I didn't say a word. God, that's like a so teacher. Was, uh, that's like a teacher when they say something. It was like, "What are you pulling that face for?" <laughs> Nothing, you, sir. You were so sure that no one else was going to get your city, and then I was yeah. like, "Oh, it's just Skyrim." Like, it's I, not just Skyrim. There's loads of cities in Skyrim, but Markarth is like is the best one, I think, by a long way. Because <laughs> there's a, you know, the classic one is Whiterun, which looks a lot like a Lord of the Rings style city. It's very classical fantasy, sitting on a hill. It's got the sunshine on it. It's like oh, fantasy. <laughs> Whereas Markarth, Markarth is cool. It's carved into the side of a mountain which is amazing and it's basically uh, reappropriated. it's built on top of a dwarven ruin in, in Skyrim in, in, the, in the world of the Elder Scrolls there's this ancient race of now extinct dwarves called the Dwemer um, and there are a bunch of Dwemer ruins all around Skyrim and there are these amazing huge underground cavernous cities basically and Markarth is built on top of one of these things and you can see like the ruins of the old Dwemer city sort of bursting through Markarth that's been placed on top so there's all this really ancient looking bits of bronze just kind of thrusting through the rock and it, you can feel the history of it just from from walking around and there's so many different uh, cultures and people living in this one city you've got um there's a mine there which they send all their prisoners to and there's a really wealthy family called the silver bloods and they just send all the prisoners and all like the lower class people into these mines to mine silver for them so they've got this huge sort of tension, class-based conflict and tension going on there. Um, there's this other group of people called the Forsworn who sort of originally inhabited Markarth before this, this current race, before the Nords got there basically. So there's that tension as well and the Forsworn are sort of planning a, a rebellion and it's set in this area called the Reach and you can engage in this story if you want and, and choose whether you want to join the force worn in their fight or you can just murder a lot of them if you want um, that's one of the great things about Skyrim is you can you're completely free to do whatever you want and it all takes place in this just incredible setting and it's just incredibly beautiful as well like you've got a waterfall coming down the mountain so there's this like amazing waterfall running through the streets and I've never been able to really articulate what it is about Skyrim and Elder Scrolls games that make exploring them so rewarding and feel so great and I, I still to this day don't know why exploring an Elder Scrolls game and in particular a city like Markarth just feels so good. It, obviously it's been meticulously designed by a bunch of humans sitting in an office at computers <laughs> but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's been there for 5,000 years and you're discovering it and it's this incredible magical feeling to it and for me Markarth sort of encapsulates why Skyrim is so good, just in this one chunk of geography, all in, in, the, in the northwest corner. I just think it's amazing. It's amazing to, to be in and just exist in that city and just to look around it. And that's without even delving into all of the stories you can. 
<laughs> for a second I forgot what Raccoon City was and I was like a city full of raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean if you forget like that's a rosy effect though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine I'm like some raccoon game with like some raccoon game happy. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you take out the zombies in Raccoon City, then it's an iconic city that, I mean, I've, I've never seen it without zombies, but I'm sure there's a lot of happy people living there. Also, that definitely sounds like a joke you would tell, Nathan. Totally your level. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let us know your favourite virtual urban playgrounds in the comments. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video and hit the notification bell to make sure you never miss another Tuesday checklist. See you next week. For the players.